Dr. Alan Keyes, former ambassador to the United Nations, he called me about Donald Trump. You know what that means. Can I get some coffee with my humble pie, please? Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's actually not true. The enemy of my enemy is still my enemy. He just might be doing something that I'm happy to have happen. In other words, if Iran and Saudi Arabia both went at each other's throats, both of them are our enemies and neither of them will ever be our friends. So, Dr. Keyes called me, Alan Keyes, who is a dear friend, a brilliant mind, a former presidential candidate, PhD, was ambassador for the United States to the UN. He, um, he said, Randall, you gotta be careful with Donald Trump. I said, all right, fine, fine. I'll go on the air on Monday and Monday night, I'll get a, give an apology, make some clarification. But first, Dr. Keyes and all the rest of you, I still have to admit, I love what Trump is doing there. I said it. And that's part, what I, that's part of what I should have clarified is that I love that Trump is just throttling the establishment. I despise the Republican establishment, the Karl Roves, Mitch McConnells, John Boehner's. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I believe that they're more responsible for the demise of this country than the left-wing Democrats and Obama. And the reason is because <clears throat> they're traitors, like a Benedict Arnold or a Judas. They're in our midst, they're at our table. They sing the songs we sing, but then they betray innocent blood, the blood of the babies. They betray the Constitution by not impeaching these godless judges on the Supreme Court. But I digress. So, <clears throat> Dr. Keyes pointed out, number one, the, his comments about POWs, I like people who didn't get caught, was actually really detrimental to a lot of POWs who were captured at various points in various wars. And his point was, look, we take the lives of our soldiers seriously. We don't ask our soldiers to throw away their lives. And in rear guard operations, when an army is moving, retreating, whatever, if, that if a rear guard operation is happening and somebody has to be there to face the enemy and they either get killed or captured by the enemy, that can, if they're, if they're captured, that can impact them emotionally, psychologically for the rest of their lives. So Donald Trump should not in any manner, shape or form cheapen what they went through, the sacrifice that they went through. And I agree with him. I think that, here's the bottom line, this for, for me, and this is how I think that, that Trump could have done. He could have just said, I'm sorry, he is a war hero. He was a, he's a war hero because he's, he was captured. But his leadership on virtually every single thing that matters to this country has been horrendous. So we give him praise for what he did in service to the country, that he didn't take an early release. But after that, he's not, he's not our friend. And he's not. So <clears throat> that was number one. Donald Trump really messed up on that one. Number two, he, Alan said, look, listen to what he's not saying. So I said, he's not saying that God is the one who gives us our rights. He said, exactly. So I know these things, but I've been having so much fun watching him throttle the establishment that I've been a little mute on them. So it's time to be not quite so mute. I did some research this morning on Donald Trump and God, just starting to search. And of course, on, on the front end, the only thing that comes up are his statements when he was in Iowa that he's a Presbyterian and he used to listen to Norman Vincent Peale preach and, uh, and that you know, he takes the wine and, and, and the little cracker and he feels cleansed and he, he doesn't know if he's ever asked God for forgiveness. These are all alarm bells, okay? These are all alarm bells for anyone who recognizes 
that God is the one who gives us our rights. God is the ultimate lawgiver. And if we don't see him as such, then we become pretenders to the throne of God. That's what you have with the Supreme Court right now. It's called positivists. It's positivism. It's the idea that man can posit law, that man can make law. He doesn't have to reflect the laws that are given to him by his creator. He can make them from nothing. And positivists are dangerous. They are really dangerous because they are a law unto themselves. That's what we have with the Supreme Court. And the question is, is that what we would have with Donald Trump if he is not publicly acknowledging that our rights come from God? That would, if he doesn't acknowledge that and understand it, that makes him a threat to us. I'll be back with a little bit more. How would you like your name or the name of somebody that you love to be listed as a producer of our upcoming series, What Would Mohammed Do? If you are in a position to give a thousand dollar gift, we have to buy some computer gear and some 4K monitors that cost about $12,000. One computer and two monitors, $12,000 because they're broadcast quality. This is not a Hewlett Packard laptop, okay? If you can be one of those 12 people who give $1,000 or more, we will list you as a producer in the series, What Would Mohammed Do? Or if you want to do it in memory of a loved one, we will do that as well. Please go to the GoFundMe site you see, watch the pilot, and if you say, I want to be a part of that, give a $1,000 gift and we will put you or the person you choose as a producer of this TV series. I thank you in advance. God bless you. Mm. Thank you. That is some of the best humble pie I have eaten in a long time. It's almost as good as my wife's humble pie when I have to eat it with her. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, if you just joined us, Dr. Alan Keyes called me up over the weekend and said, Randall, we have to talk <laughs> because he watches our show. I'm so delighted, so honored that he watches our show. By the way, we're going to have him on again soon for a, a long interview. We're going to hopefully get him up here in, in studio and just talk. Him and I talk for two, three, four hours, whatever we can endure. We'll run some of the clips on this show. We'll make it available uh, in DVD form for you. Lord help us. He's, he's still a, um, Dr. Keyes is, is still, and may he be till the day he dies, a, a, a light, a piercing bright light for right and wrong, def defining good and evil with a theocentric worldview faithful to the Declaration of Independence. So Donald Trump, back to Donald Trump. He said, whoa, 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 Randall, look, he says he wants to overturn Obamacare, but then he said in his speech, we need health care for everyone and you need to get used to it, you conservatives. So there's two issues there. Number one, he's saying flat out he wants universal health care coverage. And number two, when he says you conservatives rather than we conservatives, all right, he's he, again, Donald Trump speaks primarily without a filter, and I think that that was really said. So this guy could be on a charade just exploiting xenophobia. That's the fear of that which is different. Xenophobia about Mexicans. He think, uh, Dr. Keyes thinks that that's what he's doing. He's just exploiting this over and over and over. I, I went, again, researching today, and there was something interesting pointed out by one of the, um, the pundits on, on Trump. It, Trump, he said, look, at his website, he doesn't have any positions. He literally doesn't have, you know, here's where he stands on these things. <clears throat> Very interesting observation. Um, oh, there was one other thing that, that he, I can't remember, it'll come to me. Let, let me tell you the litmus test. Let me tell you the litmus test on Trump and all the rest of them, all right? And I told, I told this to Dr. Keyes about, about Donald Trump. I, again, I despise the Republican establishment. Oh, there's one other thing I gotta say. I love what, <laughs> you might have noticed, ladies and gentlemen, our teleprompters are down. I, unlike Barack Obama and like Donald Trump, do these programs, generally speaking, from my heart, from my head. So, what, one of the things I love about Trump is that he just tells the media where to get off. 
He just won't take any guff from them. And that reminds me of me because I've had these opportunities before in yesteryear when I was on Oprah, when I was on Donahue and when all these different shows, I would not cut any slack to the people I was talking against. If there was a pro aboard, a baby killer there, or if the media person was rude to me or rough on me, I, I wouldn't back down, would not back down. It would call them out on their own position. So, it made me persona non grata with some media people. Nevertheless, um, Donald Trump is doing the right thing. We, most conservative Americans, conservative Christians, have absolutely had it with the media. We have had it. And so Trump going after them, we're like, yes, just throttle them, pummel them. But in our excitement to see somebody like Trump pummeling the Republican establishment and getting away with it because his poll numbers are still, he's still in the lead, all right? In the nationwide poll, he's still in the lead, even after his McCain comments. He's in first place in New Hampshire and he's in a close second place in Iowa. So when, when we step back from him as Christians, people who fear God, we have to remember the two things, the two sins that cry out to God for judgment, all right? Let's just assume for a minute that Trump became president, got jobs back going to America, got our relationship with China and Russia in order, broke the back of ISIS, okay? But he did nothing to stop the shedding of innocent blood, nothing to overthrow Obergefell, this godless so-called homosexual marriage ruling. If he continued with the status quo, with these two sins that cry to God for judgment, the shedding of innocent blood and sodomy, the the abominable decision called the Burgerfell. If Trump let those two things continue, America is still doomed and it could die under his watch. Remember, if you look at the prophets in the Bible, sometimes they're prophesying judgment at times of great prosperity. A prosperous nation under Trump that still sheds blood is a nation that dies under Trump. Christians must be involved in government, period. If Christians weren't involved in government, we would not have a United States of America. And there have been brilliant Christian minds over the centuries, such as John Locke, who is called the philosopher of American liberty. He was quoted by Clarence Thomas in his recent dissent on the homosexual marriage decision. If we don't understand John Locke, we don't understand the founding of America. I want to send you this book and my book, The Sword, subtitled The Blessing of Righteous Government and The Overthrow of Tyrants. I want to send you these two books for a gift of whatever you can afford. Pay the $8 shipping and handling, which does not cover our costs, and then give a gift of whatever size you want and we'll send you these books. If you cannot afford anything but the $8, can't even afford that, write us a note and we'll send them to you for free. I want you to have these books so that you can be better equipped to fight in the political arena. Come on, order them today. Okay, Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Scott Walker, Kasich, Christie, well, let's, you know, go down the list. There's a lot of candidates in here. I am going to give all of us a simple litmus test to use, okay? And, and by the way, if you get to be in a meeting where one of the candidates is present, ask the questions directly and press them for yes, no answers. Are you hearing me? We, we are so foolish in the way that we ask questions. If I go to Chris Christie, are you pro-life? What do you think he's gonna say? Yes. If I say to Donald Trump, are you pro-life? What do you think he's gonna say? Yes. They know that they cannot win the Republican nomination without the base of the right to life, pro-marriage, evangelical, Roman Catholic, um, conservative Republican vote. The ones that John McCain calls the crazies, okay? 
They can't win the presidency without the crazies. Oh, gee, look, John McCain, you figure that out. But anyway, calm down, Randall. Here's your litmus test for Donald Trump, and then I'll give it to you for others as well. For Donald Trump, it's simply this. Mr. Trump, will you pledge publicly, because we take you at your word. You, you, when you say something is the business deal, when you say that this is the way it is, when you say you're fired, we believe you. So here's what we're asking you to do. Will you publicly pledge, number one, to only appoint judges to the federal judiciary, including the U.S. Supreme Court, who pledge to you, to your face, that they will vote to overturn Roe versus Wade and all child killing decisions, yes or no? That's the question, people. That's the question you have to ask. The follow-up question to that would be, and Mr. Trump, if a federal bill comes across your desk that would make it a crime at the federal level to kill babies in all 50 states, and we invoked Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution, which forbids the Supreme Court from ruling on it, okay? That's, that's an easy way to, an easier way to pass a law to end child killing would be a law that affects all 50 states and that the, and that the Congress put in the bill that the Supreme Court may not overturn it. Mr. Trump, would you sign that, yes or no? So there's, now that can be applied to anyone, all right? We'll, go, we'll come back to that. And then the second question is, Mr. Trump, will you use your bully pulpit to call for the impeachment of the five Supreme Court justices who voted for Obergefell? the homosexual marriage decision. That's it. That's it. Now, you can use that litmus test with every single candidate who is not either a sitting governor or a sitting U.S. senator. You can use it with all of them. Why? Well, here's the next litmus test. You don't even have to have a question for this one. If he's a sitting governor, does his state fund Planned Parenthood, yes or no? That's it. That's a litmus test right there. If a sitting governor is using state funds to fund the demonic, godless, baby-killing, pedophile-protecting, pimp-helping organization called Planned Parenthood, which is a criminal syndicate, okay? They are a criminal syndicate. If the state government where that man is sitting as governor, Ohio, Kasich, Chris Christie in New Jersey, go down the list. If they are supporting Planned Parenthood you, with state dollars and that governor signed the signature, <laughs> goodbye. You can rebuke him publicly if you get to see him. Now here's, here's the next litmus test. This is for sitting senators, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Paul, Mr. Cruz, Lindsey Graham is useless. Here's the question. Why haven't you used your position in the Senate to put in articles of impeachment for the five judges in Obergefell? A state governor can't impeach the five Supreme Court judges, but a U.S. senator can. So we need to start holding Ted Cruz's feet to the fire, Rand Paul's feet to the fire, Marco Rubio. Forget Lindsey Graham. He just needs to go away. But... Ted Cruz, by what he's saying, we need to amend the Constitution so that these judges are voted for us and they don't have a lifetime appointment. Whoa, 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 whoa. But what he's still saying implicitly, and thank you again, Dr. Keyes, for this, he's still saying implicitly that he believes in judicial supremacy. No, the judges aren't supreme over us. You've got a constitutional mechanism at your disposal, Senator Cruz. Use it. Impeach these five judges. <laughs>
we're, we're bringing you a message, but we still have bills that we need to pay. I'm asking you, if you have been blessed by this show, to please go to our website or send a check to the address you see on the screen or call the phone number that you see on the screen and use your credit card and to give 50 or 100 or $500 just to help us meet our normal expenses. And we'll keep bringing you this hard-hitting show. Why do we have elections? We have elections so that we don't have to kill people, so that we don't have disappearances, violence, kidnappings, assassinations, civil war, exile, imprisonment. That's why, I mean, you understand that, right? If you look over the history of the world, the change of governments were often very bloody. <clears throat> Elections are war by another means, Howard Phillips used to say. There are some good people in this country who say, who believe that war is inevitable, that, the, that, that bloodshed in the United States of America is inevitable. I do not believe that is true. I think that it's very likely that it's going to happen, but I don't believe it's inevitable. I believe that if we repented of our apathy, of our selfishness, if we repented, I'm talking about we, the Christian community, if we repented of our forsaking of the public square and our, our overabundant concern for our own personal finances, wealth, family, name, honor, reputation, if we would repent of these things and we would cry out for justice, if we would cry out for the fatherless, if we would cry out for the laws of God and get involved and mix it up and fight in the public square peacefully, I believe that we could have a peaceful revolution. We've seen them in other countries. We've seen it here in America. <clears throat> I don't want a civil war. I don't want it. I, you know, I can read what happened to the U.S. in the first civil war that we had, the war between the states. Don't want anything like that. If it does come to that, it's going to be because of the negligence that we are, are, are displaying right now, living out right now. So jump in to the fight. And I don't just mean jump in with your vote. Off camera, Billy Bob was saying to me, you know, you used to always get things stirred up. What can people do? All right, here's something. If one of the candidates is coming to your town, whether it's Hillary or whether it's a Republican, go in and disrupt the meeting. Just go in and disrupt the meeting. Well, that's really rude. No, it's really not. If you look at the prophets in the Bible who would go and then start preaching, it's not rude. It's, uh, it's heavenly. It's prophetic. It's really biblical. So if, you, if you're in a meeting and there's a Democrat there, stand up and say, this person believes in the murder of innocent babies and if there's a single Christian in this room, you cannot vote for her or him if it's the, one of the other Democrats. You cannot vote for him or her under any circumstances. It is a sin against God. Just keep preaching. They'll come and take you out. Just keep preaching. Go, look up my name and look up the Denver Convention. Look up Bill Clinton. Look up any number of situations, at least we got in and we defined the debate. And guess what will happen? The TV cameras are going to follow you. And they're going to say to you, why did you do that? And then you're going to be able to do your little soundbite and say, abortion is murder and we cannot elect a president who supports the murder of babies. Boom. And maybe six or 10 or 600 Roman Catholics and, and evangelicals who intended to vote for Hillary will say, oh, I can't do that. Maybe you'll be the person who God uses to wake them up when they're watching you on the evening news. Same with Chris Christie, George Pataki, Ted Cruz. If you're in a meeting with Ted Cruz, ask the question, Senator Cruz, why haven't you introduced articles of impeachment? Or have a protest outside. Go on the sidewalk, get six or eight of your friends and hold up signs that say, Trump, will you end child killing? Will you protect the babies? Just put his feet to the fire. Get, we've got to get that off of simply immigration and onto the two critical life and death issues for this republic. Be imaginative. Go to our website. We've got training material there. Make 
yourself a part of this equation for the love and fear of God and the love of our country. Thank you.